All right. Um, hi guys. Good afternoon. So yes, welcome to the next session. And today we are going to focus on two things. Number one, we are going to take a look at how to put everything together. So we have discussed React, we have discussed Express, we have discussed MongoDB. So one agenda is going to be putting everything together. And the second is to discuss authentication, right? So we'll talk about what authentication is, what authorization is, and then we'll take a look at how these things work, right? Uh, in, in full stack. So we'll put everything together. We'll create a login form. We'll create a, a sign up form and we'll try to create some functionality, some uh, backend, which will accept a new user, create a new user account. And then similarly, once we log in from the front end, we should be able to see that this user is currently logged in. Right. So that is what the focus of the session is going to be. And the second thing that we um, will focus on is, like I said, putting everything together. So again, just for one, like maybe the second last time, I'm going to put in, um, create a new React application, create a new Express application, uh, repeat the steps that we have for the MongoDB setup. And we'll put it all together. So I'll also show you a better way to connect to MongoDB through Express, where we can actually secure our credentials, which we haven't seen so far. We'll also talk about some other things like encryption and you know a couple of those things as well, right? So there are a lot of small, small things that are left now. Majorly, if you talk about the broader topics, we have covered more or less everything. Right? We have covered HTML, CSS, JavaScript, then we have covered DOM manipulation. Then we have covered React. In React, we have covered components. We have covered hooks. We have covered router. We have covered uh, how to get API data. Then in Express, we have covered uh, you know a bunch of different things. Right? For example, we have talked about um, how to create an API endpoint, how to connect with different HTTP methods, sending data, receiving data get, post, put, patch. We've discussed all of that. And we've also seen how to work with MongoDB, right? Uh, in MongoDB, we have seen how to set up the account and we have seen how to, you know, uh, get everything else done as well. Okay, so that's what we've discussed so far. Again, I am hoping, uh, expecting, assuming that hopefully the last, uh, in the last session, when you had a word with the team members, they were able to help you with all your project queries. So I hope that has already been resolved, right? I, uh, again, like I said, I cannot help directly with queries. I also have to reach the team. So in the last session, we had them uh, in the session as well. And they were, they were available to answer all the questions. So I'm assuming that all your questions uh, were answered and you have now been able to create groups and also choose your project topics as described. Now listen very carefully regarding the projects also. Uh, what is going to happen is that in the next week, the next three sessions that we are going to work with, session one, two and three, that's next week, that's Monday, Wednesday and Friday. I am going to take up a sample project topic which is going to be similar to what you would have received or you will receive once you submit your team details. So I'm going to pick up a project abstract, right? And I'm going to create an entire project in the session for you in three sessions total, okay? So I will be showing you how to create the project report. I will be showing you how to understand the abstract. I will be showing you how to do the UML diagrams uh, along with the code and screenshots. Right. So I'll try to give you an entire walkthrough of how to create the entire project all the way from the abstract, all the way, basically starting from the abstract, all the way to how you need to actually deploy and submit the project. Okay. We will do this in a span of three sessions, which is next week. So I'll take up a dummy topic. It will be none of your abstracts. I'll pick a random abstract, which is given to none of you, right? But I'll tell you all the steps uh, or all the tasks to be performed step by step, okay? So we'll discuss the abstract first. Then I'll show you, okay, this is the first step, second step, third step. And parallelly, I will also show, show you how to update the project report so that you do that parallelly. 
it will not happen that you create the report first or do the project later or you do the project first and do the report later it has to be done parallelly right so i'll show you all of these things um, in the next three sessions so please inform to your project members please inform your friends and whoever is there uh, that they should not miss the last three sessions very important uh, i'll show you everything regarding projects and also how to deploy so what do you need to actually submit is also something that i will tell you right so you need to be very careful and attentive in those last three sessions please make sure you convey this to everybody in your team so that none of you miss those sessions right such that everybody is able to contribute to the project it should not happen that only one person is doing all the work or only two people are doing all the work i want everybody to participate in project development because when you actually build that project you will learn these technologies properly and right you are listening to me i am giving you a demo uh, i am giving you some challenges and you are doing them that is good but you will actually properly really understand things only when you make a project on your own right so that is what the last three sessions are going to be about okay uh, so yes that is what uh, i just wanted to tell you before we start with the session and yes regarding the recording i'll check that with the team um i have updated the github repository with everything i had so you can see session 20 material is now available right so mongodb fundamentals this uh, okay hold on the screen is not sharing one second yes so i have uploaded mongodb as you can see right so the mongodb material is available in the repository i have also added the links till session 19 i also could not find session 20 so again i'll check with the team and get that uploaded but yes um, this is what we have and again we will be doing the entire mongodb setup today as well so just in case something went wrong with the previous recording it should not be a problem you can watch today's recording instead for mongodb i'll show you the steps once again uh, that was majorly what we covered as well right so yes this is everything that i have also uploaded um, from my side and again it is available in this link that you see on the screen Okay, the uh, project report, the sample project report is also in this repository. If you remember, it is under project talk. So under session 10, where we have the project talk, if I just open that, you will be able to see the sample report over there. But again, I will be referring to this sample report a lot over the next three sessions as well, because we'll go ahead and create our own report uh, based on those, uh, you know, based on the abstract that I pick up for the next session. Okay, perfect. Now what we're going to do in this one, like I said, is we'll start by creating all the applications once again from scratch, and then we'll go ahead and connect everything together. So that's the first major agenda for the session. Then we'll take a quick break and then we'll discuss the authentication part. And we might run 10, 15 minutes beyond time today. So I hope that is fine. We might need to stay a couple of minutes more, but I want to finish off all the concepts and then focus on a, a proper project in the next three sessions, right? So yes, let's jump in and get started. Now, when we start working on a project, um, so today we are going to create a simple one. So I'll just, um, you know, call it a blog kind of a thing, right? Um, you guys can hear me, right? I Focus. Yes, it is audible. I can hear it on my YouTube live. So it's fine. Yes. So uh, like I was saying, right, what we will do is we'll create a simple um, example. Yes. So the project report is available uh, in this link. You can see it on the screen. Uh, thank you so much uh, for putting it in the chat as well. Uh, Sheikh Salim, thank you so much. So Salim has also put the report in the chat. You can open that. Um, I think there is a two missing in that link. It's not a valid link. Hold on. Let me put a link. Yes, I will put the link in the chat and then you can go to the 10 folder, session 10 folder. I'm also putting the same on YouTube as well. So again, everything regarding what we have seen in the sessions, including all the PPTs, all the code snippets, uh, everything is available within this link. So please make sure you open the link and bookmark it, star it, open the repository, star the repository so that you have it on your account at all times. 
yes so like i was saying today what we will do is we'll create a simple project and there are two major um, parts to a project or three major parts to a project that's front end back end and database so typically in a development team this is done by three different people and right? there will be a separate front end developer there will be a separate back end developer there will be a separate database person and they will do these things parallelly right so what i will do is i will refer to a design just as an example i will also show you what a design a final design looks like and what we will do is we'll try to create something similar okay we'll not create something very fancy but we'll try to create something similar uh, or we can just pick up some dummy data that mongodb gives us and work with that as well but i just want to show you the whole process of setting up the front end then the back end then the database and then connecting them together now typically it is up to us to choose which component should be done first because we are going to make all three things we don't have different developers for this right so our front end back end and database is all going to be the same so uh, or is all going to be done by us so the choice is really yours but what i personally do is i start with the back end okay i start creating the back end first then i set up the front end and then i work with the database that is my approach uh, because when i start working with the front end i will first have to put all the dummy data to create it which then i have to remove and replace with back end which is too much work so instead of that i prefer directly setting a back end then front end and then database you know can always be set up because anyway the data that we will require will come from the user only so we can set up the database towards the end so my personal approach you know is that we uh, basically start with back end first another thing that i want you all to do today i hope you all have laptops with you is to follow everything that i am doing step by step so that you can also make sure that your setup is fine okay because when you start working with the project you do not want issues you do not want errors you do not want to say you do not want to tell me that the commands are not working right so please make sure that you uh, try things along with me and then i'll take us a, a 10 15 minutes slot for questions at the end if you're facing any installation issues any npm issues any of those i will help you out at the end of the session today right but what i want you to do is to make sure that you are able to create a react app create an express app and your mongodb login is done so that you can also then work on the project okay so it is very important that is why the whole session today is dedicated to putting everything together we are not covering any new concept as such we just want to make sure that everything is working fine okay let's start working with this so i'm going to open vs code and i'm going to open a new folder so typically when we work on a project like this we really want to open a new folder in vs code for which we can go to file open folder and then navigate to the folder so i'm going to open today's folder that's session 21 in my case okay you can also open up a new folder in your vs code now once we have the folder open we typically create two folders here right um, which we have also done before so we create one folder called front end and then we create one folder called back end in the front end obviously we write all the react application stuff and then in the back end we will write all our express application stuff so those are the two things that we have to create next first we are starting with back end in my case so i'm going to go ahead and open the terminal now i hope you already know the commands and remember them by now but the command for creating the back end or command for initializing the back end is npm init hyphen y or npm init before this we have to cd into the back end folder right so now we are in the back end folder then the command is npm init hyphen y this will take all the default values and create our package.json file as you can see the file has now been created okay so this is the first step initialize the backend which we have done now then we typically replace the test script with the start script and this will run nodemon so nodemon index.js okay this is going to be our start script i can also put my name in the author if you want to you can put your name as well if you have multiple authors you can put all the names right? for example if i have multiple authors i will put it like this 
So when you build the project, make sure you mention all your team member names over there. Okay. If you have any confusion at any point of time, please put a message in the chat. I will stop whatever I am doing at that point and help you. Right? Of course, confusion relevant to what I am showing you on the screen. If there is any confusion regarding this, right? Um, you can quickly just uh, let me know in the chat. I'll immediately explain it to you then and there. Perfect. This is done. Then the next thing that we have is to install the dependencies. Right? So we can npm install. We need nodemon. We need so nodemon is a separate command because it is a developer dependency. So it looks like this npm install hyphen d nodemon. Let me go ahead and that will install nodemon for us. Perfect. Now, if you check the package.json again, it will be added as a dev dependency. So the difference between the normal dependency and a dev dependency is that normal dependencies are available or are required to run the application whereas dev dependencies are not dev dependencies are only needed to develop not to run the application so when we put it online at the end when we deploy this application later right uh, we typically will work with the um, will not use dev dependencies so we'll only install the normal dependencies now, what are the normal dependencies that we need? Well, we need Express. Then we need Mongoose for our MongoDB connection. We need Body Parser in order to read the data coming from the um, front end. And then we need something called .env. This is a special package. I'll tell you about this now. So these are the four packages that we need. So npm install Express, Mongoose, Body Parser, and .env. I have put all the names separated by a space. You can also write individual install commands if you want to. So you can write npm install express, then npm install mongoose one by one. But this is a much faster way as you can probably see. And we can directly get everything installed in one go. We can check these are added as normal dependencies and not dev dependencies. Right? So these are normal dependencies that we have added now. If we need anything else, we can always come back at any point of time and add them later. I just remembered we need one more thing called course, C-O-R-S. That's for cross origin resource sharing. I'll tell you more about that as well. Perfect. Now all the dependencies are installed. Next up, we can create our application or our file. So that's going to be index.js. Okay, this is our backend. And let's quickly set it up. So first we need express. So that's require express. Okay, then we, we can import everything together. So I'm going to import all four, five things. So const mongoose is equal to um, require, then mongoose is needed, right? So that's mongoose. Then we need a body parser. So that's body parser equal to require body parser. And finally, we need dot env. There's a separate way to do that. I'll show you that as well. And then we have require course. So these are four things that we need. Then we can set up our application. So that's app equal to express. This is what will create our application. Once we create the application, we have to make use of these two packages or dependencies. So that's app.use course, first of all, and then app.use body parser dot JSON because we are working with JSON data. Okay. So this is everything that we need to set up before we actually, you know, uh, run the application for the very first time. This course is used when our data is coming from an external source. So since in this case, we are going to create an API and create React, wherein React will send us the data and API will respond to it. We have to put course here also, and we will put something similar in React also, the Axios package. So that is how the course will be handled. If you don't put course, then you will get errors when you try to connect React and Express. Okay. Listen very carefully. If you don't put this one single line, this course package, then you will get errors when you try to fetch data from your React application or fetch data when you want to connect your front end to the back end. So this one line along with, of course, the installation is very important. Perfect. Then we can start the application. So that will be app.listen. For this, we have to provide the port number and then the callback. So this is what we need. And then we can just say console.log app started. 
okay perfect this is done now let us go ahead and create the actual setup right for this what we need to do is we need to create another file which is called dot env so that's dot env basically this file does not have any name it only uh, has an extension that's dot env so this is a new file we are talking about this for the first time today right this file is basically going to be um, where we put our database URL, right? So MongoDB, uh, let's say Mongo and DB and URL, okay? Or we can just say MongoDB URL equal to, and we can copy the connection string from our database. If you remember, we already had it, right? We, uh, I told you how to get it, I'll tell you again, but this is where the connection string will go, okay? Then what we do is we get that URL over here, so we can say const db url is equal to then we say process dot and then mongo underscore url for this what we need to do is we have to also configure that dot env package so we can say dot env dot configure so again i'll get the syntax from the documentation let's look for it so dot env documentation and here you will find a working code. Okay. So this is what we need to do. Require dot env dot config. That's it. So what we're trying to do here is we are trying to create a separate file wherein all our credentials will be stored so that the credentials do not become public. Okay. Git or GitHub never accepts a dot file, which is basically a file without any name. Okay git or github does not uh, ex uh you know accept any files that don't have a name so if you notice here this file that we have right this file that we have is simply called dot env there is no name of this file so github will not accept this file when you try to upload it this way what will happen is all the credentials that you have like your database url password all of that will stay within or your system or will stay only on your system okay it will not go to github which means it will never be shared in public that is why we store it in a separate file then we are going ahead and we are setting it up we are saying require dot env dot config what this line of code will do is this will add that url to the system process okay so every operating system has something called process. This process contains a bunch of different values, right? So if you just, you know, hover over it, you will be able to see all the different values that a process typically contains. But what we can say is we can say process dot, and then we can access the DB URL. Okay. Again, this is how we can access the URL. If you see the documentation, you will find the same thing. You can see they are putting the private key in the documents and all of those things. And finally, you can also get an example of how to get that value right on the front end. So you can see they have so many examples over here. So we can go to Node.js example and you can see over here, they are saying process.env. So this will give you access to the value. In our case, we have to say process.env.db underscore URL. This is the variable that we have just created. So that's MongoDB URL. Okay. If you command click or control click on this, it should take you to some definition, which is fine. If you, again, you can check here. If you click on ENV, you will see this. So if you just hover your cursor over ENV, you will see a pop-up. This will show you all the different values that are available. This means we are getting the value from the correct place. What we can do is we can try to print it for now. So let's just say console.log and we simply print the URL to check if we are getting something or not. And here I can just say this is URL. Okay, we should not have spaces typically. So this is just a quick demo to see if uh, this file is working. Finally, we need a path. So let's put a path that's app.get, let's say slash. And then we have request response. And then we can set it up like this. And for now, again, we don't have to do anything. We can just say response.send or response.json. Let's send a message. 
right working fine we're just putting a message as a response that says working fine now let's go ahead and start this i will tell you all the commands in just a minute uh, rupa i've read your message let me just uh, give you this demo and then i'll tell you so now the command is npm start to start the application and then you can see that it says port is not defined fair enough so let's just put the port here like so and then it is starting and you can see now we get this is url if i just zoom into the console you can see we get this is url right so this means that we are receiving the output that we want okay i'm going to quickly repeat everything that i have done and I also make a file called steps.txt where I'll quickly tell you all the steps. So you can refer to it later as well. The first step is to create or not create. The first step is to run npm right? hyphen y. This is for the backend, right? In terminal. So this will create the package.json for us, right? So creates aje package.json okay this is the first thing that we do once we have the package.json file with us the next step is to install install nodemon right so the command for this is npm install hyphen d nodemon okay. so this is the second second step then third step install of the dependencies so typically you will need again you can make changes to this but you will need express you will need mongoose you will need course body parser um you will need what else express mongoose course um body parser and okay let's check we have express mongoose body parser and dot env and so dot env Remember the package name is dotenv, not the literal file name. So that is .env. Then let me hide this so that we can see this better. Perfect. Then we have to modify package.json and add start script. Right. So here we have to basically modify the file, which is package.json. And here we add this line. Okay, so within scripts, we have to add this line. Okay, I'm just writing it like so. So within scripts, we have to write this. Replace test and add start script. Okay, this is the fourth step. Now, once this step is done, then we move to the next step, which is create index.js file. And then we continue with our index code. So these are all the commands. And then uh, we create a .env file. Okay. So this is where we will put our database URL. And then we can run server or start server using npm start. These are the basic steps. Okay, now of course we have to also write all our index logic. So write all index.js logic and then start the server. Okay, so this these are the steps. I will keep them in this document, steps.txt. This will be uploaded to GitHub. So you can refer to these steps later on as well. Okay, I hope all uh, everybody now has a good idea of how to set this up and what commands to run. If there is any confusion in any of these, please let me know and I will help you out. Okay, perfect. Now that this is done, we are back to our index.js. This is the bare bone setup that we have done. Now, the next thing that we want to do is to go to MongoDB. So this backend part is done now, more or less, right? Um, I'm really sorry, I can't repeat this again. I've already repeated it twice. I did it once and then I made this file once again. So I really can't repeat this. You can watch the recording later. Otherwise, we will run out of time. So I'm going to move to the next step now. The backend setup basically is done. Okay, so this is the basic backend setup. Now, the next thing that we have to do is to establish the connection to MongoDB. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. 
yes so anil has a question regarding uploading react js assignment please delete node modules folder please delete node modules folder before you create the zip file node modules contains thousands of files that are 200 300 500 mb we do not want to submit those so before you submit any react assignment or even share react code with people please delete node modules folder you will also see that in the github repositories wherever i have uploaded react code i have never uploaded node modules see there is no node modules folder in any of my uploads so please make sure you delete node modules and that should be fine okay so yes uh there we go perfect now the next thing uh, so anil uh, i will answer your question uh, hari prasad he is saying in react latest version we don't need to use env file hari we are not using env for react this is express we don't need to use env for react it is only for express we have not created a react project yet right so in express you have to use it otherwise your credentials will become public and anybody will get access to your database which we obviously don't want Uh, without node modules, how can we create? Uh, you cannot, Harsha. You need node installed on the system. Otherwise, neither can you create Express application nor can you create React application. Node is a must. So without node, you cannot do either of them. That is why node is there in the name. When we say MERN stack, right? that N stands for node. Node is the uh, runtime or that processor which lets us create both Express and React applications. Okay. Perfect. Now, next thing is I'm going to uh, go to MongoDB. So let's go to MongoDB now. And on MongoDB, I will quickly show you how to establish connection again. So let me go ahead. Uh, if you're doing this for the very first time, you can click on the try free button. When you click on the try free button, it will guide you step by step. Please enter all the credentials properly and you should be able to uh, create a new account. When you create an account for the very first time, it might ask you for some uh, quick questions like it will ask you who you are are you a student are you a developer right who you are and what is your plan why do you want to use mongodb etc etc so it's just a quick optional questionnaire uh, please fill that okay once you do you will land up in an interface where you have to create a new project or create a new organization rather so you will see something like this okay which i am showing you on the screen now uh, yes rani i have read the question i will talk about course uh, in just a minute so now that we are on the organizations this is the first step okay so then we have to say create a new organization this will automatically guide you if you're doing this for the very first time mongodb will automatically guide you so you have to create a free uh, create an organization so you can put the name of the organization over there then choose the first option which is the default selection and click on next this is the first step now, once you create the organization, the next step after that is going to create uh, is going to be create a project within that organization. So again, you will see a form like this where you have to enter the project name and you have to enter some tags which are optional. So just the project name is enough. So put the project name and you should see a project like this. Then you open the project and then it will walk you to creating a new database cluster. This cluster creation is very important. So again, if I just show you how it looks like, it looks something like this. Okay, It will resemble something like this. You have to choose the shared option or the free option. That will be M0. Okay, You will see an option saying M0. Then you have to choose a provider from that list and you can give it a name. That's it. So you put all the basic details. Make sure to select the free cluster. Don't select a paid one the two there are three clusters two of which are paid m10 will be paid and serverless will be paid there will be a third option which is m0 it will be called shared cluster okay shared cluster that will be the only cluster which is free so choose m0 and then you can just give the cluster name that's it then it will ask you for two other things the first is going to be database access so it will ask you to create a new user for the database. Make sure you remember the password that you give. 
that password is required when we want to connect through express okay we cannot connect without that password so that password is required then it will ask you to uh, add an ip address so please choose allow access from anywhere okay you can choose allow access from anywhere actually let me go ahead and show this to you once again so i'm just going to delete our current cluster so that uh, we can create a new one so let me just go ahead and show you the mongodb steps once again i'm not really sure if the recording is um, available or not so since we covered mongodb creation in the previous session let me just do that once again so i'll just delete the existing cluster and then i'll create a new one this will take a minute but i think it's important so let's just do that so you can see it is stopping the servers one by one and done perfect so after you sign up to mongodb then you create an organization then you create a project then you will end up here okay this is the final step so again you sign up you create the organization you create a project and then you create the database so you end up here you click on this button build a database this is going to give us different options right and yes so these are the three options as you can see we have to select m0 the third option you can see the first one is showing us a payment the second one also shows us some payment which are paid so we have to choose m0 it says free okay so choose m0 then you can give it the name that you want so i'll just call it mongodb demo cluster you can call it whatever you want uh, make sure there are no spaces in the name it will give you an error right? invalid name so no spaces and it does not accept any special characters as well except for a hyphen or a dash so those are the only special characters that you can use so i put mongodb demo cluster you can uncheck these two things we don't want security setup we also don't want the sample data set so uncheck these two things then choose a provider doesn't really matter what you pick and i'm going to go with the default selection and then click on a uh, bottom right you see a button create deployment right this button so just click on this button but again double check that you select the free one if you select a paid one by mistake at this point you will have to make a payment your account will be charged and you will have to make a payment then you go to the next step so here you have to do two things first add the ip address just click on allow access from anywhere and then it will tell you to create a user so again make sure you remember your username and your password okay they are important and that's it once you do all of this you will see the cluster over here under database deployments then from the left menu we can switch to database so again under deployment section the first option database we can switch over there this will then show us some statistics so as soon as you connect to the cluster it will start showing you some stats now how do we connect well we can click on the connect button and click on drivers this then gives us the url so we can copy the url from there and then paste it in our .env file okay so we paste it over here i'm going to replace this with the url now this url is really important we have to make two changes here number one we have to put a password so i'm going to put a password i think this was my password i'm not 100% sure but if it's a wrong password we will get an error so we can see that okay and then the next thing is we have to put the name of the table or name of the database that we have to create so that name needs to be put in before the question mark so after we have the url that's after dot net over here we have to put the name of the database if we don't put the name it will take the default name as test test so i recommend you put whatever name is appropriate in my case i'm going to put something like to do list okay this is the database name so this is a url we have just copied this from mongodb and we have made two changes the first change is the password here and the second change is the database name then we can go ahead and we can connect to this how do we connect we can just say mongoose.connect and then we have to provide the db url so let's provide that 
and done. Now our connection to the database should be established and we should be able to see the, uh, we should not be able to see any error. As long as we don't see any error, it would mean our connection is established. We can also put another console.log here saying DB connected. So NPM start. Perfect. It says DB connected, which is great. If I have invalid credentials, let us say I remove my password. Okay. I have just removed the password or basically I have put an incorrect password. If I have invalid credentials, it will give you an error like this. As you can see, it gives us an error. It says bad auth authentication failed. This is a very common mistake that most of us make when we connect for the very first time because most of us forget to modify this file or forget to modify the URL, right? So we have to put our password over here. By default, you will see something like this. Right? So you have to replace your password over here in those angle brackets. So we basically replace our password and then we are good to go. Also, you can put the database name as well. Once we make these changes, then again, if we run the server, let me just clear this. And then again, when I start it, you will see it says DB connected and no error. If you don't get any error in the terminal, this would indicate that your connection to the database is successful. Okay. So this is everything that we have seen so far. Again, I can't help you with uh, project issues. I'm very sorry. You will have to get in touch with the team for this. I don't have access to any of those uh, project bits. So yes, um, yes, coming back to the steps now, let me quickly add on to these steps. And then what I want you to do is I'll give you 10 minutes. I want you to try to do this setup. I want you to create a new Express application. I want you to connect to MongoDB and do this whole process. I'll leave the steps on the screen. So then sign up to MongoDB, then uh, create an organization to create a new organization then create a new project and then within the project create the database cluster now within this cluster you have to allow access from anywhere okay and then add a new user user and password these are the steps that you have to follow for mongodb then the next step is click on connect and then drivers. Then copy the connection, connection URL. Okay. Then paste the URL in dot env file. And finally, modify the URL. Two things. So first add password and database name. Okay. And then use mongoose.connect db URL to connect. So these are all the steps that I have written for MongoDB as well. Right. So I leave this document on the screen. What I want you to do uh, in the next 10 minutes until I could be, you know, break my fast is to uh, just go ahead and try to connect using this. So I'll just duplicate this on the side so that we can see everything um, together. So the first few steps will be on the left. Right? And I think I'll put the MongoDB steps on the right. Okay, so the first eight steps for Express are on the left hand side. And then the other steps for MongoDB are on the right hand side. I am making sure everything is visible to you. Right? So you can see everything now. Eight steps on the left. And then the other steps are on the right. You can take a few minutes. Try to set up your backend. Try to connect to MongoDB. And if you face any issues or errors, let me know once I am back. Okay, again, so uh, Nani from the YouTube chat, please don't spam the chat. We don't need course until we connect with React. Once we get to the point where we require the use of course, I will highlight it. I have read your question. There is no need to put it 100 times in the chat.
okay yes so let me uh, quickly now go and i'll be back in a few minutes until then you can just uh, try to work with these so take some time out again this is very important if these things do not work you will not be able to create the project and there will be no point of going through all of this training right so try to get this done and um, now uh, once i come back i'll take all the issues that you're facing and i'll help you out with those
okay yes uh, so hi guys we are back in the chat uh, quickly let me know if you were able to set this up so i give you a few minutes to set up the back end and the database uh, were you able to get this done a quick yes or no in the chat would be great and then we'll move to the front end and see how we can connect everything together Okay, so I've written down the steps also in this file, which is steps.txt. Make sure you access it in GitHub and you can follow these steps later on. Um, I'm trying my best to answer all the questions and guide you step by step. I hope you are following along because if you don't follow along this from this session onwards, then it will be very difficult for you to create the actual project because these are the exact same steps on that you have to follow over there as well. Right. So I hope that, you know, um, you are following along with this, um, this 2091, a whatever the number is, uh, the error is because you don't have the correct string. Um, so please make sure you get it from MongoDB. This entire thing needs to be copied. It needs to start with MongoDB. So the error that you're getting is saying that you are not copying the string correctly. Right. So please make sure you copy it from there and you should be good. Also modify the password and the database name and that should work fine. Great. So we have our front end and uh, we have our back end and database set up. Now we are going to move to the front end. So I have already created a folder for it, but I'm going to delete this from here. The reason why I am deleting the front end folder is because when we run the create react app command, it is going to create a folder for us. Right. So now let's go ahead and run the command. That's npx create react app. And I'm going to call it front end. So this will automatically create the front end folder as you can see. And it is then going to give us a react application. Again, if you have any doubts or questions, please put them in the chat. I really can't give you my access at this point. So um, yeah, whatever questions you have, please put it in the chat. Uh, yes, here is your package.json, uh, Rupa. The only thing that you change is this one line. That's it. You add the script. Instead of test, you add the start script. That's it. Nothing else. So this is already given in the steps file as well. I've given you this code. Okay, that's the only change that you have to make. Perfect. Uh, now our front end is done. The session is 21 today. Uh, Jamgam, right? Manjula, it's 21. Um, again, it's right there up top. I put it here every single day. It's there throughout the session. So session 21, full stack crud is the topic of the session or the uh, title of the session, right? Uh, great. Now let's go to our front end setup. So we have already created the front end. And now let's open it up. So that's CD front end and then NPM start. As soon as we run this, this should open a new browser window for us. And we should be able to see the default code that we get from the React application. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete everything that we don't need. So in the public folder, I will delete everything except for index.html file. Then in the source folder, I will delete everything except for index.js file. I will also delete the git ignore and the readme files. So I have basically just deleted everything, uh, you know, that we have just, yes, I know Manjula the message at 20, but the session number is 21. Uh, please ignore that message number. Yeah. Um, yes. So the session number is 21. Uh, right now the next steps. So in the index.html, let us first get rid of all the code that we don't really need. So I'm just deleting everything that we don't need at this point. Right. So the entire head can go only the title can stay. And similarly, this comment in the body can also be deleted. We don't really need that done. Now, remember how react works is very simple. What we have to do is we have to use this div. Right, we have to use this div and not we, but basically React will use this div 
and it will render the react code within that div so here let's delete everything that we don't need and let's replace it with a single h1 where we just say hello okay perfect and done so if you see this line line four in line four what we are actually doing is we are re getting the root from the html file so that's get element by id we have already discussed this with our dom manipulation right we have seen how to do this and then we are seeing root dot render hello so this is done right great now the next thing that you can do is you can go ahead and create the components that you want so i'll create a single component we are going to call it a to-do list so typically we make another folder called components and then within this folder we can create the component that we want let's call it to-do.js then i'm writing all the default standard react code okay and then let's say h1 and to do finally we can call this to do inside our index so that's to do and done so this should now give us to do on the screen which we get perfect now what we want to do here is two quick things number one i want to add a new item to the database right so i'll create the front end for that i will create the back end for that then we want to get all the items from the database and display them on the screen so again we'll create the front end for that and we will create the back end for that this way we will understand the entire flow right let's jump in and take a look at how this can be done the very first thing that we have to do is to return a div right and the first thing that we will have is going to contain is going to be an input field so this input field will basically be where the user can add a task. So placeholder, add task, okay? Or basically let's just change it to task name, right? Then we will say uh, type equal to text, okay? And these are the two things that we need. And then we will have a button. This button will be add task. That's our input. And this is everything that we need to create a new task. Okay, we can type this in and click on the button. And as soon as we click on the button, we want to establish connection to the backend. And then the backend should in turn connect to the database. Okay, And the task should be stored in the database. Right now, there is nothing in the database. If you go to browse collections, you will find that this is empty. So <clears throat> what is the first step? The first step is to set up our backend so that we can accept a task from the user or read a task from the user. So that will be a post method and we can call it add task. This is where we want to connect request response. And then what we want to do is we want to read the data coming from the request, right? So we can spawn new task is equal to request dot body dot task. This is the task coming from the user. And then we can write the database logic over here to insert that task. But if you remember in the previous session, again, I'm repeating this, but in the previous session, I have already told you how to create something called a schema and then how to create something called a model. So I'm going to make a folder called schemas. This is where I'll keep all the schemas. And then I'm creating another folder called models where I'll keep all the models. Let's call it task schema. Now this will require the use of schema from Mongoose. So let's say const schema is equal to require. Okay. And then we require Mongoose for this. Then we can go ahead and create a new schema. So we can say task is equal to new schema. And then we can specify everything that we want in the task. So let's say we want two things. The first thing is the name of the task or the title of the task. So that's title. That's the first thing. Then we can specify a couple of properties for this. So type string, for example, the type of uh, the title that we want is string. And then it is required. So we can say required. Okay. And then true. So required is true. Okay. And then we can add the next thing, which is going to be our, um, let's say completion status. So let's call it status. Then here we again type the same thing. So this, this type can be. Okay. And then this is not 
required, but we can set a default value, which is false. By default, status can be false. Okay. Then we can say module.exports <coughs> is equal to and then task schema. And yes, that should do it. So yes, let me quickly tell you what we have just done. Uh, before we insert anything to the database, what we really need to do in MongoDB is to create a schema. Then based on the schema, we have to create a model. And then and only then can we actually perform any kind of database operation. So what we have done here is I've created a new file called task schema. We are using this file to create the schema. Schema is a class which comes from the mongoose dependency or the mongoose package. How we create a schema is like this. We specify all the properties that should be available for every data item. So we are saying that each task will need a title, which will be of the type string and its value is required. You cannot create a task without an empty, like with an empty title or without a title. Then the second thing that we want is a status which is of the type Boolean. Let's call it true or false. So that completed or not completed, true or false. Then we finally say module.exports and then we are exporting the task schema like so. I think equal to should be fine. So we are exporting the task schema. Okay. And yes, I think this is the correct syntax now. Once we create the schema, we have to then create a model which is based on this schema. For this, I'm going to create a file. Let's call it taskmodel.js. And this will require two things. First, it will require model again from mongoose. So const model is equal to this will require mongoose. And then we are going to create the, uh, we also need the schema. So let's say const and task schema. This will be required as well. So we require this. Where is this? It is inside the schemas folder. And then inside this file. So we have specified that. Then we can create a new model. So again, that will be const task model equal to new model. Then we have to give the name, right? So this is lowercase m. Then the name, let's call it task. Now this name will be converted to a plural and that will be the name of the collection. The database name is what we have given in the URL. So in the MongoDB URL, this is the database name to do list. Okay. Then what will each individual collection be called? It will be called tasks. It will plural take the plural of this. And then what is this based on? Well, it is based on the task schema. This is our model and then we can export it. So we can say module dot exports is equal to task model. Done. So these are the two steps that we have to do. First, we create a schema which defines the structure. Then we create a model which is based on that schema. And this model then allows us to communicate with the database. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and use that model. So we can say const task model is equal to require dot slash inside models find the task model. And then we can use this to perform the insertion. So we can say task model dot save and then provide the new task. Now this new task must be a JSON, like must be in a JSON format because that is why we have our body parser. Okay. So this is the entire setup. Again, step one, we create the schema. Step two, we create the model. And then step three, we are actually reading the data from the user and we're going to now insert that data. How can we test it? If you remember, I introduced you to a to an extension known as Thunder Client. Right. So this is the extension. Let us use that extension to test it out. Okay. So I'm going to open a new request in Thunder Client. Let us get our backend port number. So our port number is three thousand and one. If you see, so that's going to be HTTP localhost colon three thousand. This is our port 3001, I think, 3001. And then what is our endpoint? It is add task. This is our endpoint. We have to provide the JSON data. This should contain only one thing, which is the name of the task. And then we can keep the value 
um, the false value as default. So this is title, let's say by groceries. This is my task title. In addition to this, I can have another property, which is going to be status. Since this is a Boolean value, I will keep it to false. Okay, done. Now, next up, we can connect. And we have to also change from get to post. I switch to the post method. Now I'm clicking on the send button. Before you do this, make sure that your server is running fine. And yes, also we have to respond with something. So response.json, let's put a message. Let's say task added. So this is the response that we are sending. Let's send the request now. And you can see it immediately gives us an error. It says task model dot save is not a function. Uh, Sandeep, you cannot create anything in the database without a schema. Okay, so how schema works is it tells MongoDB that the task needs these values. So whenever we perform any insertion, the that insertion data will be checked against these this schema. Okay, so it will check if the title is required, then is it given by the user or not? It will check is the type of the title a string or is the type of Boolean. So think of this as a blueprint, right? just like we create a blueprint of a house before actually building the house. In the similar way, we create a schema before actually adding anything to the database. Then based on that schema, what we have to do is we have to create a model. Okay, so we are calling it task model and you can see new model. It is based on that schema. Now let's quickly check why we are getting that error. So what we can do is we can copy that error message and try to search for it. Okay, I think this could be our problem request dot body and yes we are saying request dot body dot task so this is the problem we just have to say request dot body and then we should be good okay the server is still running let's try this once again send and now we get another error it says task model dot save is not a function okay uh, we have put this in the body itself let's remove the status and try again let's see if that works so send and uh, nope, still not working. Okay, let me put that back in. And this is post we are at at add task. This is 3001. The route is at task. And okay, so now let's print it out. Let's say console.log. Let's print out new task. Let's see what we are actually getting, uh, you know, from the request. So this is another important thing that I want to tell you, which is debugging. You have to be able to figure out what is going wrong. You can see the task is coming in. We have the title also and the status also. So this is not the problem. Um, the task is coming in. So that is still fine. And then that leaves us with task model. This seems to be our problem. So let's check in the documentation. Let's go for Mongo's documentation and see if we can get an example over there. So in the left, you can see there is everything here. You can find whatever you want. Right? We are looking at model. Right. So we have to create it like this. This is the <clears throat> thing we have to say. New tank, which is new task in our case. So let's go back to our index and create it. So we can say const new task is equal to task model of and then provide the data. That is request.body. This should give us the JSON data. And then we are saying new task dot save. And this is not needed. I think this is the correct syntax now. Let's double check. So we can go ahead and send the request once again. Perfect. This time you can see we get a message task added. 
Now, how do we check this? Well, we can go back to MongoDB. So let's close off everything that we don't need back to MongoDB. And then on the right hand side, you will see a button refresh. Just click that button and that is when the data will be refreshed. You don't have to refresh the entire page. Just click on that refresh button and you can see now we have a to-do list. We have our tasks and this task is also now available in the database, right? So this is how the backend is now complete. The next step is to actually perform this from the front end. We don't want to do this through this Thunder client right? we want it to happen from React. So this is where course comes in, right? At this point, when we establish a connection with the front end and we don't have course. So Nani from the YouTube live, this is for you. This is answering your question. If we do not have this one line of code, this line over here, when we write the React code and connect, then it will fail. It will say uh, cross origin access blocked. So this course stands for cross origin resource sharing, which means when the resource is coming from different places, for example, one local host 3000, one local host 3001, they are two different URLs. So when the resource is coming from two different places, we need to have course enabled. That way browser will automatically take care of the security aspects for us. Okay, so now how do we do this in React? We need two things. We need use effect and then we need use state. These are the two hooks that we need, right? And we don't use effect, we need to fetch the data. Use state, we need to read it from the user. So let's create a variable to handle or store this task. So let's say new, let's say task and set task equal to use state. By default, it can be an empty object okay then whenever we modify this so let's say const um let's say update or read task this is something that we will you know write to modify it when the user gives us the value okay so what will this do this will take the task from the value that the user is giving us and it will say set task what will we set this to well we will create a new thing so we'll call it title and then the task. Okay. And then at this point, we can also set the status to false. So for each task, when we create a new, new one, it should be false by default. Perfect. Now in the form, we have to add an on change. And that is when we want to call read task. So every time the input value will change, right? Every time the input value will change. What do we want to do? Well, we want to call the read task function. And what do we want to provide here? We want to provide the task value. Okay. Then we have to also change the value of this input to task. Again, we have done this so many times. I have shown you this before also when we were working with React. We are doing two very important things here. Every time the user is changing the value, we are editing this object. We are setting the task to that value. Okay. And Similarly, the value will also be reflected on the uh, front end. Then we have to use a package called Axios to establish that connection, right? So at this point, let us go ahead and install Axios. So that's npm i Axios. We have to post this data to Express. Right? We have to send this data to Express. So for that, we need the Axios package. And when should that happen? Well, it should happen when the button is clicked. So we can write the logic const add task is equal to again. We can make an arrow function. And then here we have to first use Axios. So import Axios from Axios. And then add task. What we want to do? Well, we want to say Axios dot post. This is the connection that we're establishing. Let's get our URL. So this is the URL localhost 3001 add task. This is the URL. And then what do we want to do? Well, we want to also provide the data that we have, which is our task. Okay. Or other, yeah, we have the task. So this is our data. Okay. So we are providing that. And then what then what we can do is we can just say, the response that comes from the server, let's just 
printed in the console. So console dot log response dot data. That's it. So whatever JSON we send like a message or whatever it is, it should be displayed in the console. Then whenever we click the button, so let's say on click, we will call this method add task and done. Okay, we can also, I think, just keep it to add task like this. Perfect. This setup looks good to me. Now, whenever we submit the button or whenever we click that button, we should be able to connect to the backend. So we are connecting to this endpoint. This endpoint will in turn trigger the database connection. Right? So when we hit that endpoint, this will be called. It will read the task from the body. It will save it to the database. And then it will give us a message saying task added. So this is where the entire integration between front end, back end, and database is happening. Okay, let's test it out now. So our back end is running, our front end is also running. And you can see there is this object object coming in. I was worried that this could happen. So this is why we need another here. Let's call it user task. This is the value that the user is giving us. And it, this can be a normal string. So we can actually change it to user task and uh, we don't really need to do that. And then instead of we'll get one more method um, or we can just directly say set user task here and then get the uh, value. So that's E dot target dot value. That's E. E dot target dot value. This should give us the value and then this should be user task. So what I'm basically doing is I'm just separating the two things and right? I am just separating the two things. So what we are doing is one, we are, we don't actually need this now. What we're doing is we are simply reading the task from the user. We are storing it as a string. So whenever the on change happens, we are just updating that string and that is what is being displayed to the user as well. Finally, we are posting it and while posting it, we are creating a, a dynamic task. So we are saying take the user string, put it in the title and then status will be false. Okay, the front end is now also running. Let's test it one more time. So you can see now that object object is gone. Let's say cook food. Okay, I'll also open up the console first so that we get to see the output if anything comes in in the console. Perfect. Let's add task. As soon as I do this, you can see immediately we get a message in the console saying task added. Now, if you go back to our database and refresh, we should now see two tasks. One that we added from Thunder Client and the other one that we added just now from the front end. And you can see now we have cooked food, right? Similarly, if I just modify this and let's just say uh, instead of cooked food, we change it to let's say plan the week, for example, I will add task. Again, you will see we get a message saying task added. We can go back, refresh. And this time we should have three uh, items or three documents in our collection. So this is the entire front end back end integration. You can see plan the week, right? So I've shown you the entire setup front end back end and database integration from the very basic. Okay, we have created the backend, we have created the frontend, and we have also linked them or integrated them together, right? So that is what we have already done. Okay, this is what we have. And again, this is the entire setup. So first we create the backend folder where we write all the backend logic. For the backend logic, what we majorly have right now is we have a post route, which is going to read a task from the frontend and store it in the database. To work with the database, we have to create this .env file where we get the entire uh, the string from the database. Then we have to create a schema, which is the blueprint of what we want to do. Then create a model based on that blueprint. And finally, we can use that model like this. We're using the model to actually insert data into the database, right? What we can also do really quickly since we have the entire setup is we can read the task back as well if we want to, right? That would look like is we can say all tasks is equal to task model dot. Okay. And we can put an empty bracket. And then in addition to or instead of this message, we can just pass that to the user. So we can say all tasks and we can just send that back. 
So this time when the user goes to the slash route or the home route in the console, they should be able to get all tasks, right? So in React, we just have to add one line of code to get this, which is the use effect. So over here, we can say use effect, okay? And then we can pass in the URL. The URL is HTTP localhost colon 3001 slash. This is our URL. And then, uh, okay, I think I put it in the wrong place. One second. And this is the use uh, use effect syntax. So we first provide the, the URL and that should basically get all the data for us. So we can say axios dot get. So get this data for us and then dot then what we want to do is we just want to print it out. So response and whatever response comes in console dot log response dot data done. So now we should be able to get it as well. Okay. In addition to just adding it to the um, database, we should now be able to read that task as well. You can see as soon as we do this, uh, we get some errors on the front end. Let's check our inspect and console and there's nothing in the console. I think the server stopped running. Let's double check. Okay. I think the backend is not running right now. So let's start that. So CD backend NPM start. You can see we get some error request failed, bad request, bad response, something like this. So it probably means that something is wrong uh, in our connection or in our backend code. So it's something off over here. Uh, looks good to me actually, but okay, no worries. We'll work with this later on, but yes, the idea is right. We are, we should now be able to connect to that database as well. So for now, let's just comment it out. So whatever was working, will continue to work right? and we can figure this out later on as well. Okay, perfect. So again, I've shown you the entire uh, connection part today, all the way from creating front end, back end, and everything. And the back end steps are also written in this file called steps.txt. So you can check this file out. Once I upload this on GitHub, I'll do this after the session is done, right? Perfect. Now, um, the final thing before we wrap up for today is if you have any installation questions, right? Uh, please let me know in the chat now and I will be able to help you out with those. So if you have any questions regarding installation, if you have any questions regarding this is not working for me, that is not working for me, uh, please let me know. The assignment links all open fine. I have checked them out myself. So if I just show you quickly. So if I just go to the repository, there are four assignment links mentioned at the bottom and all of them work. Okay, You can see the first link is working. The second link is working. The third link is working and the fourth link is also working. So all of these links will work fine. They will first take you to login page. And then you have to log in using your credentials. Okay. So uh, assignment links are working fine. Okay. Uh, great. Uh, I'm just looking at questions if there are any in the chat. So again, please make sure that you uh, stay back if you have any questions. Uh, no, Jyoti, you cannot use local MongoDB because you have to submit the project, right? I should be able to open the project, test it, use it. How can I do that with a local setup? So you have to use MongoDB Atlas. Local MongoDB will not be allowed. Okay. So remember you guys, if you use a local MongoDB setup, then all the marks that you have uh, for MongoDB will be given zero because I will not be able to test it. So I will not know if the code that you have written will work fine or not. Uh, this is Sheikh, Sheikh Nazim from YouTube. Um, Yes. So there are four links that I know as of now that are in the repository are working. In addition to that, if there are any other assignments, then please check your emails. You should have received them on email, right? But um, there are four assignments that you have to submit, which is already on the repository. I'll ask the team to check it out. Um, so for everybody who is telling that there are assignment links not working, uh, okay, no problem, uh, noted. 
let me talk to the team once the session is done and i'll check uh, check with them and i'll tell them to see what is the problem with the links okay um what else any other questions uh sandeep if you don't use axios you can use fetch instead but axios is the package which is allowing us to initiate the api calls so you can see all the api call that we initiate is being done with axios so if you're not using axios it will how do you connect to the api it will you will not be able to connect to the back end at all so instead of axios you can use the fetch method if you want to but fetch does not have these things you don't have done then and uh, you can't access the response as easily as this so this is the package which allows us to connect with the backend and i really um, recommend using axios over other options because it is really simple to use oh yes also um, you guys please make sure that you attend the next three sessions so in the next three sessions, which is basically next week, we only have one week left for this training. So in the next week, what we are going to do is we are going to, uh, you know, we are going to go ahead and, uh, yes, we are going to go ahead and, you know, we are uh, going to cover all three things. Uh, basically on all three sessions will be regarding the project itself, right? So I'll be creating a project from scratch. Okay, so I'll guide you step by step how to create a new project from scratch. So it's very important that you attend the next three sessions. Please inform all your teammates, all your friends, everybody, right? Uh, to make sure you attend next week's sessions without fail. Okay, so yes, that is it for this session. Thank you so much, you guys, for attending. Please make sure you fill the feedback forms out before you um, leave, right? Please make sure that you fill the feedback form before you leave. And yes, that's it for this one. Let's uh, meet on Monday and start building a proper project.